have and even on just a regular prevention gig, you know, a lot of times that these churches and such they meet on Sunday and Wednesday. See if you can tap into their service to where you can go and give a present just a very quick presentation, you know, let them know. Cause a lot of times these churches are they're the heartbeat of that community. So if you want to get some information out, that's a really, really good place to go. And then of course your local schools, elementary, middle, high school, college, junior college, whatever, uh, tap into those places because they'll be able to help you in tapping into the, the schools. You also tap into several other different resources. I know when we were in Alabama, we kind of looked at one of the universities there to see if they could help us with some video stuff. So if you don't have somebody capable on your team to make videos, it's colleges are really good places, high school are good places because they want to add those type of things to their portfolio so they can grow. So don't be afraid to reach out to any of these uh, places. The, the some of the other places um, you look around because a lot of the, the areas have um, different cultural type stores, uh, restaurants, you can tap into them. And our, my big thing is don't do not be afraid to make that step and go out and make these contacts. You know, the the preacher, the minister, you know, the, the different places of worship, they're a great resource for you because they pretty much know the heartbeat. Your fire departments, go to the fire departments, go to the fire chiefs, trust me, the fire chiefs know who their folks are and they'll be able to help you get one, get your message out and two, be able to give you direction. Now, when we were in Alabama, we knew on Sunday that it was a belt buckle of the Bible belt. And so Sunday we pretty much shut down and was able to do you know, a lot more of the research on Sundays. But you can go to these churches and ask for five minutes during the service on a Wednesday or a Sunday or Saturday, whenever they meet and use them. And like I said, you'd be surprised how many of the civic groups, churches, schools can be a great resource. Now I know with the civic groups, when we were in Texas, Andy and Nick, two of our team members, they ended up going and meeting with them and had a great time and they were able to pick up some information where we could use it in Texas. The if you part of the first meeting with Karen, she talked about the Robotron and the Robotron Smokey and stuff. Those were some of the commercials that Nacho did and was able to, to help them out. And to my knowledge, they they're still using them today. So with that being said, I told you it would not last 45 minutes. And what's the question? Is there a specific link for the US Forest Service? Yes, it is. Yes, there is. I will find it and I will put it into the chat. Any other questions? Just don't get hung up on when you get out there as a team member or team lead. You want to do as much research as you can before you go out so that way you can kind of go out there equipped and ready to go and yes i know there's google translator yes lady Does anyone have any questions? Okay. 
with no questions. Um, sorry, it was very short, so so short, but there it like I said, this is a very beneficial tool to have in your toolbox. And like I tell a lot of Yeah, um Nacho. Yes. Um do your talk to them about the different dialects within the Spanish language and how to be careful. Well, from here from Florida, there's Puerto Rican, there's Cuban, and I think the Dominican Republic, Haiti, they also speak some kind of Spanish, but mainly Cuba and, and Puerto Rico. Um, I can somewhat understand it. Well, I can understand 90% of it. Some of the words can mean a little different than what my words in Mexican or street wording. It's not the, the Spanish from Spain, actually, that we speak. So even in Mexico, just he, like here in the U.S., there's different dialects and different regions of the of the country. So yeah, it's all understandable as Spanish, but uh, to translate it sometimes it's hard. Like on those uh, PSAs that I did for Texas last year, it was kind of hard choosing the words or the right phrase of translating it. OK, and how many did you do? Was it six total? It was four total dragging chains, pile burn, tall grass in the. The robot. Yeah, the robot one. Um, but I, I did all of them in English and then in Spanish. So it was eight total videos. And need to make sure that you give them a lot of leeway, especially like with this situation, um, to where they can have some prep time to do what's being requested from the from the host agency. Uh, Pete, you have a question? Yeah, let me unmute. Thank you, Patrick. Important topic. Um, and actually, it's kind of like two questions for Nacho, if I can. Yes, sir. So uh, to your point about recording four separate videos in two languages for a total of eight videos, um, did you have a pretty tight script? Uh, ahead of time and some practice that you were going by? Did you practice through them several times before getting the the money shot? No, we drove that morning, uh, wrote it down and started shooting that afternoon. <laughs> wow. Wow, man, good for you. So second question, and, and I'm sorry, I was sort of hung up in uh, and got into the chat room late, so might have missed a little bit, but uh, uh, I'm, my sense is that, that you don't have as much experience with prevention teams as Patrick does. Is that right? Uh, I've been out six different teams with Patrick. Okay. So um, what's your advice? as somebody who is bilingual for somebody like me who's not bilingual but is going into an area where that's important? Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we have found already out there. That it is translated to the U.S. Forest Service. Um, it's, it is hard to find. I mean, we have found it, but it is hard. Um, the, the only thing is, I mean, be slow with it. Um, nowadays, I mean, the kids are usually the ones translating for the parents. 
at least, you know, in Spanish, you know, a, a lot of the kids, just like my kids, uh, only my two oldest understand Spanish. The three younger ones, they can't even speak it or, you know, read it or nothing like that. And that's, that's my fault for not teaching to them, but it's just so easier coming from school, going home and all that, just to speak English. I got you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Can you all hear me now? This is Lee. Yes, we can hear you now. Ah, OK, thank you. I had to mess around with my speakers. So my question was, um, with the examples that you gave, was it that once you got out there, you all realized the need for a translator or did the order the host unit, um, you know, give you a heads up before coming out or or have you seen the ordering the host unit ever put that in their orders that they need a prevention team that has bilingual capabilities? Ha, have you ever seen that? We have. With the Klamath, that was just kind of a sideball that came through, came around. Um, oh yeah, by the way, this is what we have. And we have developed a kind of a cheat sheet of questions to where we get a mini briefing before we even leave our houses. Um, I will talk to the IC or POC and then I'll call everybody else in on the call and have them listen and I'll go through a list of questions. That way we know what we're getting into before we even leave the, leave the house. And I give them time where they can ask the que any questions that they have. And so it's kind of a living, breathing cheat sheet. And on there is, is there a need for a bilingual? If so, what? And that way, if there is, then, you know, OK, we need someone that speaks Spanish. All right, well, I have two people I can call. Right there at the district. OK, I need one of y'all to go. Who's going to go? Um, if they need another language, then I can start reaching out to, you know, to more and more. So that, that's just things that we have learned. Um, I know Todd, Andy and I all have the same sheet and we kind of add to it, you know, with each deployment. Well, that's an excellent idea because you can hit the ground running instead of getting there and then scrambling to, to find a signer or a bilingual or whatever exactly. language. So exactly. that's excellent. OK, thanks. Yeah, it's almost like an incident within an incident. Yes, Pete. Pete? Ah, yeah, that damned old mute button. Are you, Patrick, willing to share that question, Liz? Yeah. Love to see it, man. OK, I will find it and I will send it out. And some of the questions you'll probably look at it going, why is he asking that question? Um, because there's one on there about any natural disaster. You know, when I was in California, I heard the siren go off and I looked, I said, what's that? And they said, oh, it's our title. Uh, um, title wave alarm. It's like, excuse me. Um, <laughs> where do we go if this happens? And so, you know, tornadoes, um, of course, fire. So, I mean, uh, earthquakes, you know, and so our, our team has a um, kind of a plan. If we have an incident, another incident within an incident, we kind of played off the, the PIO uh, realm. And that way, if there is an incident, then we have ways to you know where we can contact with each other yeah there. i was going to think a lot of crossover with the pio realm oh yeah sarah Thank do you, you have a question sarah cannot hear you sarah
There, are you there? Oh, okay. But I can't. Can you hear me? There, there you are. Okay, sorry. I think it connected to my phone. Um, I just, uh, you know, you said you would send out a link for the Forest Service, but you really didn't talk much about using the Forest Service's resources in your presentation. So I guess that's what I would be interested in hearing about. Okay, um, because I will admit I've never used them. I know there, there, they are, there is a resource out there. I just kind of find it easier and quicker, especially if you need somebody quickly, because I think there's a 24, 48 hour turnaround using them, using the Forest Service. And so if I can find someone quicker, because like I said, this Hmong, I want to say it was within 30 minutes, we had somebody. And a lot of people won't trust the Forest Service, especially in some of the places that we go. But I will find that link and I will put it up there. That's I just encourage you to use the places of worship, the schools and civic groups. Just for fast for speedier response. Hopefully that answered your question. Are there any other questions? And having someone on the team that can do the translation really helps. And I know that the Florida team has been recognized several from sev several people with how diverse we are. And, you know, we we go out and yes, we work hard, we have fun, but when we leave, I want to make sure that we have met every need that the Forest Service has. And so having that translator with you or access to one just makes it a lot easier and a lot, a lot smoother. And Patrick, you realize after this presentation, Nacho's phone's going to be ringing off the hook. You do realize this now, right? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you can't awesome. call him. I, I am his agent, so all oh, requests go through me. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, but I also have another in-house uh, female that is looking to go out. So, you know, I will pass her name on to y'all because she really wants to go out as well. So, all right, um, Pete, you have another question? Man, I'm just full of them today. I yeah. got my mic working now. But there you I, go. It, it sounds like you guys may, your team may go out a little bit heavier than some of the other teams. Can you talk about your preferred team makeup when you go out? I mean, I know it's not a bilingual question, but we got a few minutes maybe. My ideal uh number yeah seven. number and skills number i like to take seven people with me and that way it's easy to team everybody up with each other which we rotate everybody to where someone you're not together the whole 14 days you kind of switch you know people around and with again that that questionnaire i ask how many people you want us to bring and then from that point on i start to build a team that a lot of times they ask how many would it take you don't want any more than 10 absolutely no more than 10. um alabama it was four three so that's what they said that i could you know could bring so a lot of it is up to your poc but i always try to talk them into one giving us seven people, letting us bring a total of seven people and two trucks and or SUVs. Yeah, copy, thanks. Um, I'm having trouble opening your document. 
says I'm not. OK, we're, we're finding that hap is happening a lot. I will get with um, the host and see if we can post that elsewhere or yeah. we have you, or we have your email. We can send it to you that way. It will get it to Robin and he can get it sent sent out. Uh, Gwen, I saw that. You posted something about fire danger sign in Spanish. Give him to Nacho. Maybe he can help you with the translation. Yes, Nacho, I'm volunteering you. <laughs> I just thought surely it's out there, but when I did some Google image searches, I could not find any any of it in Spanish. Okay, well, reach out to Nacho. If you don't have his information, I can give you his state email address, and he'll be more than happy to help you. Right, Nacho? Nacho's Nacho's scared now. <laughs> Silence is golden, right? Right. Oh, trust me. When I get home, I'll pay for it. So, but anyway, uh, anyone have anything else? I was on a fire call. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone have anything else? Good right, session. Thank, thank you. Thank you for attending, and I'll get that website up in the chat and uh, see if we can get that questionnaire out to y'all. Thanks so much. This is great. Really appreciate it. Okay. Y'all stand by for the switchover um, in just a couple minutes. Thanks. <laughs>